From building bridges to portfolio optimization or solving routing problems, a lot of these challenges can be broken down to solving a system of linear equations, usually one that can be written in the form ax equals b, a matrix multiplied by a vector that results in another vector. While a and b are given in such a scenario, x is the variable we want to find a solution for. If we look at this operation in more detail, for example for the first line of our matrix A, we can discover an underlying pattern. For each element of B that is calculated, the operation can be written as a sum. To generalize this equation, taking an arbitrary form of an M by N matrix, the according indices can be adjusted leaving us with the well-known element-wise notation for matrix multiplication with a vector. Nothing special so far. But let's get back to the point that we're trying to solve for x here. Since x is a vector, we can break this process down to solving for each element xi of x. Within each of our sums, xi can be found among the multiplication of the diagonal elements of A. Looking back at our generalized sum, this part of the operation can be extracted, as long as we also exclude it from the sum term itself. Rearranging this to xi gives us the final equation to solve for our missing vector elements. Well, almost. We do have x on both sides now, so how does that work? The Jacobi method is an iterative algorithm, meaning that we're trying to get closer and closer to our solution over a few cycles. The k indicates the cycle we are in. And while xk plus 1 is what we currently calculate, xk is simply the last solution computed. This gives us the element-wise notation for the Jacobi method. Separating our matrix A into its diagonal and lower and upper triangular parts, we can also rewrite this formula in matrix notation. So let's apply it. A problem we are trying to solve might look something like this, and putting our newly derived equation in Python codes looks as follows. To start out, we simply have to make a guess for our starting x, so let's pick the zero vector for our example case here. Iterating over and over again shows us how our result develops, but how do we know if we're truly progressing towards something useful? In numerical analysis, we use something called a residual for that. We know that our exact solution for x, since ax equals b, will yield zero if we rearrange it to ax minus b. Therefore, we can measure the quality of our result by calculating axk minus b and seeing how close we get to zero. To be precise, since our residual is a vector, we have to calculate the norm of it. We will use the L2, or also known as the Euclidean norm, in this example. Evaluating this residual over the iterations shows us that we get closer to the real result over time. And you can stop the cycle whenever you feel like you're close enough to what you're trying to achieve. But what if our solution doesn't converge and looks more like this? The Jacobi method doesn't converge for any matrix A. The standard convergence criterion is fulfilled if the spectral radius of the iteration matrix is smaller than 1. The spectral radius is simply defined by the largest absolute eigenvalue of the iteration matrix. For our example case, it was 0.26, but for a system like seen on the right, with the B vector remaining unchanged, the spectral radius is bigger than 1 and therefore we should not be surprised by the divergence of our residual. Some of you might have already realized that this algorithm doesn't make perfect efficient use of all the information we have available at a given step. Since we are iterating through the whole x vector each time, when calculating a given xi, the method uses the old values of the k cycle up to xi minus 1, even though the new k plus 1 data is already available at this point. If we take advantage of that information and split up our sum into the already updated k plus 1 and the not yet known k data, we get a slightly more efficient variant of our algorithm called the Gauss-Seidel method. Looking at the convergence of the Jacobi method seen in red here, and the residual of the Gauss-Seidel method seen in green, shows us how the improved algorithm really does affect convergence speed. Today, we looked at a simple but genius idea of how you can numerically solve systems of linear equations and derive the according algorithm absolutely from scratch. I hope this gives you a new perspective on how you can tackle similar problems that you think are worth solving. Thank you for watching and see you next time.